Basal squamous cell carcinoma is the most common oral malignancy and it accounts for 80 to 90 percent of oral cancer and it is the sixth most common cancer and it arises from the epithelial cell whereby the rate of growth is very fast and it is a very aggressive tumor. Thus, the treatment of OSCC mainly is white local excision and also involving the neck dissection to remove the infiltrative uh, cell at the lymph node and also a reconstruction if the surgery is the tumor that we remove is big followed by post-operative radiotherapy whereby in USM, PPUSMB for those patients who refuse for surgery or contraindicated to do the surgery what we do, we do a brachytherapy plus external beam radiotherapy to treat oral cancer especially at the tongue this is the example of surgery where we remove the tumour with the margin of 1 cm so you just imagine if the tumour is big across the midline we have to remove near total or almost total glossectomy followed by the neck dissection where we remove the fibre fatty tissue and the lymph node which usually involves bilateral side of the neck if the tumour is small we can do a primary closure whereby if the tumour is big, we have to do the reconstruction where we take uh, the cell, the tissue from either uh, what we call this radial forearm or also anterior lateral time. And definitely it involves a major surgery and follow the hospitalized stay. Whereby for brachytherapy, we apply the same principle of surgery where we put the applicator at one centimeter margin of the tumor and it takes around two to three hours to put the applicator and during the brachytherapy session it definitely a painless procedure this is the example of a patient where whereby he had uh, exophytic tumor on the left lateral border of tongue this is his condition after nine months of surgery the main advantage of brachytherapy is tissue sparing, meaning that the patient doesn't have to get the tissues from distant side of the body. The tissue that present is the patient's own tongue will retain the function for taste, for speech, and also for mastication. And this is another example of our patient having squamous cell carcinoma at the buccal mucosa. Where we do a brachytherapy, you can see the treatment result after 3 months, definitely the tumour is gone and the patient having the side effect of fibrosis with scarring at the buccal mucosa. So, our main advantage of brachytherapy, it is a minimally invasive procedure and it is a viable option for those patients who refuse or contraindicated for surgery and currently, our data shows that we have high local control rate at the primary tumour. And another advantage, which is organ preservation. We don't have to remove part of the body in this treatment. And patient will have reasonably good oral function after that. And by doing the surgery, sometimes we need to delay the initiating of radiotherapy in view of maybe leakage or infection and we have to wait for the patient to completely heal from surgery before we start the radiotherapy post-operatively. And this is the only center in Malaysia currently that doing brachytherapy, oral brachytherapy. Definitely, it is a steep learning curve. There are many things that I think we personally can improve and do research uh, in order to improve our treatment success. This is how we insert the applicator inside the mouth during the surgery. So as you can see that actually it is quite difficult for us to visualize if the tumor margin at the posterior is beyond, uh, is at the posterior one third of the tongue. So it is good if we can uh, manufacture or invent equipment that uh, incorporate probably a camera, intraoral camera, 
and also a guide that can depress the tongue and guide us to put the applicator right at where we want it. One of the most common complications that we have for patients undergoing hybrid therapy is that the patient might be having osteoretonecrosis, which is the bone exposure at the mandible. So in order to avoid or minimize the risk of getting the osteoretonecrosis, we make the patient to wear spacer. This is our first generation spacer made up from acrylic where we push away the tongue. And along the way, we find it difficult to manipulate during the brachytherapy session. So we do the spacer, this time using a silicone, which is polyvinyl uh, siloxane. Where it is more versatile, we can trim during the insertion of uh, applicator and also during the brachytherapy session. And the main function is to protect the tongue from uh, getting high radiation dose. However, if we can further improvise the spacer, for example, like incorporate plumbum or lead uh, to protect, it is much, much better or we can find any other ways uh, to protect the mandible that will be much more beneficial to the patient. And complication that we have uh, post hybrid therapy mainly is bleeding, but it is very, very rare. And we can have a submental or submandibular hematoma, and some patients having post operative pain, odinophagia, gum injury, and mucositis. Whereas the long term side effect of it is patient might be end up with having altered taste or reduced taste sensation, and xerostomia, which is dry mouth, dysphagia, a bit difficulty to, to swallow. Uh, patient might be having a necrotic ulcer, especially at the area where we put a very high radiation dose. Osteoradionecrosis, which is the most common complication that we've seen now, and also gingival erosion. As for osteoradionecrosis of jaw, the treatment of it is very difficult since it is the outcome is not predictable. There are multiple ways of people doing it, uh, published in evidence-based with medication treatment using a pentoxifiline and tocopherol regime and also adjunctive of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and also surgery and together with using a PRF machine or if the lesion is too big, we have to cut away the mandible and reconstruction with uh, reconstruction plate and with a distant plate also. So uh, it is good, this is example of the case uh, the patient having ORN at the posterior right side of the mandible. So uh, we send the patient for hyperbaric oxygen therapy, adjunctive, 30 dive before the operation and we do the aspiration which is the marginal mandibulectomy and with the primary closure and we can see the bone reduction from here and this is the outcome of the patient 6 months post operative. Alhamdulillah we managed to uh, treat it and to cover the mandible fully. But as I said, the treatment, the outcome of the treatment is unpredictable because of the uh, damage of the microvasculature at the lesion, at around surrounding tissues, and also because of the radiation dose itself that make the surrounding area fibrosis and difficult for us to get a primary closure. So, potential collaboration is, to me, one is the fabrication of tongue depressor uh, incorporated with camera to improve the accuracy, uh, especially at the posterior one third of the tongue, and also for management in terms of prevention and also managing the osteoradionecrosis of jaw. In the prevention, any products or any, any lab incorporated into the spacer, or any other ways of how to increase healing in this type of patient. With that, thank you very much.